All right, take a look at a video this time dealing with graphing linear equations. Um, at this point, you should learn how to create points from a linear equation situation. Then those points now can go into the graph. It's really kind of a piece of cake situation. We want to spend a little bit of time here going over, kind of, first of all, the general concept of what's happening here, kind of beginning to tie all this stuff together. And we're going to take a look at two graphing methods, one finding the intercepts, one just finding any other points that you want. And then we'll finish off there going with vertical and horizontal uh, lines. So let's first of all start with the general concept. Uh, the general concept of what's happening here is really kind of simple. You have three, a linear equation has an x and a y. And it, both of those are to the first power. This is a linear equation because it creates a certain pattern where as one point or as one way goes a certain amount, the other way goes a certain amount and it creates a certain pattern and a particular ratio and that's what creates the line. And what we've been dealing with is we been dealing with three situations. You have an equation. The equation deals with an infinite number of points. It's just telling you all the values, some x and some y, that add up to be 13 in this particular case. In another place you would have gone over a thing called a table. That table is a representation of some of the points that make that particular equation true. Okay, so those are linked together. This is all the points. This is the relationship between any two numbers. If any two numbers have this relationship where they add up to 13, then they work. This is a list of some of those points. So I might have 10 and 3 or 6 and 7. Those are a sample of two of the points that make that infinite set work. Last but not least, uh, we have what we're going to be going through today, which is the graph. The graph is a picture of what's going on in that situation. If your x-axis, your y-axis, you should know that stuff already. These points go onto that graph. That graph is a representation of that thing. This is also usually considered an infinite number of points as well, although it doesn't list the points in particular. It's showing a picture of all the points that are used in order to make something true. All right, so the next question is if there's an infinite number of things that make this equation true, how many do I need? I need two, all right? Now, think of what I'm, I'm, I'm saying here, is if I have a coordinate plane and I have one point, there are an infinite number of lines that can go through that particular point. That one point doesn't set anything. But as soon as I give a second point, there's only one line that can go through those two points, all right? So I need, out of all the infinite number of numbers there are, I only need two pairs, two ordered pairs, two points that work in order to set the direction of the line. Now you're going to hear me say on a fairly consistent basis that you want three just to make sure that you haven't made any calculation mistakes, but two is all you have to have. This is the same concept, the same idea as aiming something. If you were shooting a rubber band, I don't know if you've ever shot rubber bands with your finger here, but you wrap the rubber band, and then you kind of aim like this, and then you let go, and the rubber band goes. That aiming process uses those two points. All right? I have a bow and arrow. When I pull out back my bow, I look through one, I've got another. Those two things together set the line where that arrow is supposed to be able to go. That's the concept, the idea, same concept or idea of what's going on here. So you have the equation. That represents an infinite number of points. You have a table that is a sample of some of those points. We will use tables to get to the graph because once I have two points here, I'm able to be able to make the graph um, from, that, at the, from that point. All right, so let's take a look at an example here. Uh, my favorite way to graph, start off this. This works most of the time, and I say most of the time because there is an exception to the rule. Uh, the second method I'm going to show you does work all the time, and it doesn't matter which one you use because it all boils down to if you have an equation, find two pairs of numbers that work in that equation, and you're off to the races. And then we'll sometimes we'll make a third one, uh, especially if it's easy, just to be able to check and see uh, what's going on there. All right, so let's come up here uh, with the equation. Let's say we have 2x plus 3y is equal to, let's make something simple, let's say 6, all right? There's a linear equation, x to the first power, y to the first power. Oh my gosh, how do I graph this thing? It's a piece of cake. What do I need? I need two points. The easiest way for a lot of people is uh, a concept that's behind this, and that is you plug in zero for x and zero for y, and you see what goes with those two things. Now, why does that work? Real quick, the reason on the y on that is the x-axis, every, every line just about has to go through 
cross the x and the y axis. Again, there is an exception to the rule. But every point along the x axis has a y value that is zero. So what I'm doing is I want to figure out when does this or where does this line cross the x axis. Every point on the y axis has an x coordinate of zero. So that means I'm trying to figure out where it crosses the x axis. Those are two points. As long as it doesn't go through the origin, it gives me two different places that I can be able to go through there and find. Now, this is the reason, another reason this is an easy method is because plugging in zeros is a piece of cake. Okay? You can plug in zeros and get easy, easy answers. You plug in x is zero, that makes this go away. So I end up with 3y is equal to 6, so y is 2. And then I plug in y is zero. 3 times zero is zero, so that makes 2x equal to 6. So this is 3. It's that simple. I already have two points. They were easy calculations because of the zeros. The point zero, 02 is there. That is on the y-axis. X is 0 on the y-axis. Here, y is 0, so it'll be on the x-axis, 1, 2, 3. And I have that point. I now have two points. Two points are enough to set the direction of the line. And off goes the line. All right. Now, I told you that there are an infinite number of points along this line. There are. I found two because two is all I need in order to say, here it is. But whatever point is right there will work in this equation. Whatever point is right there will work in this equation. Whatever point is right there, yes, right next to that one, just off it just a little bit, that point will also work in this equation. All of these points, that's what the graph does. Every point, 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 for infinity that way and infinity that way will work in this equation. There are an infinite number of things. It doesn't have to be whole numbers. Uh, it could be any little fraction-y, decimal-y little thing there as long as those two numbers together go in this equation to make it true, um, it ends up working. Now this is only using two points. If I made a calculation mistake, I'm not going to be able to pick it up on the graph. I'll show you how to fix that on the next example. This is one way to graph. This does not always work. There is an exception to this particular rule. That exception would be as if this is a zero over here. Now I have to go through and find a different point uh, to be able to go through and work with, and I'll show you that here in the next example. All right, so that's that. That's my favorite way to graph. I know off my head, right off the bat, whether that's going to uh, be equal to, I'm gonna, uh, the intercepts are going to work in that case or not. So it works out pretty quickly. All right, so the second, or the, the next way of being able to go through things is just to use a table. Now, I'm just going to show you a different format just simply because it's easy to make the equations from here. It doesn't matter what format I'm in. All I need is two points. Is this a linear equation? Yes, it is, because it's x to the first power, y to the first power. So this forms a pattern that turns out to be a line. Now, I only need two points. In this case, y is solved for, so it turns out that it's easy to plug in things for x and just let the equation tell me what things are for y. Now, I like to pick nice, easy numbers, so I'm going to pick 0. Not going to put a 0 over here this time. 2, 4. I pick three points because I want, if it's going to be easy, and this one's going to be easy, to be able to tell me, yeah, this is on the right pattern. That way I can try to catch myself if I make a calculation mistake. All right, plugging in 0, 2 times 0 is 0, minus 3 is negative 3. That's one point already. Plug in 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 minus 3 is 1. And then plug in 4, 2 times 4 is 8, 8 minus 3 is 5. I didn't have to go by 2's. I can pick anything I want. There are an infinite number of answers. I just need 2. I got 3 to make sure that my pattern's good. 0, negative 3 is on the axis. On the y-axis, x's are 0. y-axis, x's are 0. 2, 1. So let's go out here. 1, 2, 1, roughly speaking. And then I'm just going to check it with 4, 5. Is it 4, 5 roughly in the right spot? There's 4, 1, 2, sorry, 3, 4, 5. That's up here somewhere. And it does look like they've roughly fallen on the same line. Sorry for my bad uh, drawing there, but that's the idea of what it is that's, that's going on here. Again, this is a sample. It's a table. It's just a few of the points that make this particular linear equation true. 
there are an infinite number, okay? A few in the table, and I do the best I can, the easiest I can to be able to find what's going on here. These pairs are pairs of numbers where you put one in, put the other in, and they make that equation true. Because of the pattern they make, it's called a linear equation because it makes this nice, easy equation that's going on here, all right? There are an infinite number of more answers. This one is an answer. This one is an answer. All these in between here are an answer, and so on and so forth, okay? Way off out at Pluto, way up out over there somewhere, wherever that line happens to be going, those numbers do uh, form that value. Whatever that x value would be, whatever that y value would be, those answers or those numbers would go in here and make this particular equation true. All right, one last circumstance to deal with. If you saw the video on tables, I emphasized a whole lot on these that these should not be hard. Students flip out when there's not an x and y. Oh, we got the x and the y now. What if there's not an x or a y? It's actually easier. Okay, it's easier. If I have the equation x equals, say, let's pick something nice and, nice and easy. Let's say 4. And I'll go ahead and do this one too because I'm going to show you this. y equals negative 1. Nice, easy equation, but there is no x and y. Remember, making this table is a piece of cake. All this is telling you is y doesn't matter. x has to be negative 4. Okay, negative 4, negative 4, negative 4. y doesn't matter. Okay, 0, 1, 2. What's that graph look like? Negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4, negative 4, 0. Negative 4, 1. Negative 4, 2. They do line up in a line. So this is a goofy line that does not cross both axes. It only crosses the x-axis there in that case. Easy table to make. And I, did, I put negative 4s in there. I apologize for that in the video. Let's put that into a negative 4. Um, does it matter? Would it just been on the other side going up and down in that same spot? Okay. Over here, same concept. X, Y. Y is negative 1. That's why that negative was in my head. All right. Y has to be negative 1. It doesn't matter what X is. Oh, it doesn't matter. So 0, 1, 2. Yes, I picked three points because I like to make sure my patterns are good. So 0, negative 1. 1, negative 1. 2, negative 1. Those do line up nicely in my pattern. And there's my line. Now remember, there's still an infinite number of points. There's a whole lot more pairs that could have negative 1 as its y value as long as negative 1 is the y value. That's the big key. Okay? Don't let this complicate you. Here, this is a piece of cake. You're just taking the equation, making a little mini table, which gives you a sample of the points that work. And then once you have that sample of points, you put it on there, make sure their pattern lines up, because you know they have to turn out to be a line because of the properties of what it is that you're dealing with. And then you got to go from there. Okay? If you have any questions, make sure you talk to your teacher, see your tutor. Maybe they can give you some help if you're having a hard time with something. Until next time, see ya!